Hey, FreightWaves fans and friends, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We have made it to the end of the week. It is Friday, my favorite time of the week, and four o'clock, my favorite time of the day. Thanks for tuning in and listening. We have got some, I would say, happy second day of spring, but there's serious disruptions happening in the weather, which is making for a national emergency, as I understand it, in 16 different states. Nick Austin is going to talk to us about that. And also, John Paul Hampstead is going to look at the tender rejections in some of these areas with a tree map and explain to us what is happening with logistics and the movement of freight in these areas. Hi, Nick. Chad, how you doing? Doing good. Good, good. Tell us about these disturbing trends happening in weather. We do have some disturbing weather out there today. The big area of concern, at least just for today, that we're focusing on is interior portions of New England and down in upstate New York. So uh, there's been a lot of snow there today. Some areas, uh, the snow will continue tonight. So from upstate New York, we're talking about, oh, places like the Adirondack Mountains, and into the Berkshire Mountains, which are run uh, down into western uh, Massachusetts, the Green Mountains in Vermont, all the way up in the interior portions of Maine, six to 12 inches of snow as far as totals. Winds are gonna be picking up uh, this evening as well. So there'll be at least kind of what we might call low end blizzard conditions. So wow. they'll be blowing snow and uh, lots of uh, low visibility. So that's the big area of the major precipitation today. As yeah. we see the precipitation going across the map, let's remind our viewers what some of the, uh, you know, some of this is snow. Some right. we're seeing some freezing rain and sleet. Right. right, there might be some pockets of freezing rain, but it is mostly gonna be snow, which shows up in the blue. So the darker the blue, the heavier the snow. Right. Lighter the blue, the lighter the snow. Okay. Um, and of course, the. And in the valleys and lower elevations where you see the green, that's where the rain is kind of mixing in further off to the south. But uh, the snow is going to be a problem up there. And before we look at a couple of the cameras up in this part of the country, you do want to mention there's also snow coming back to the Sierra Nevada and eastern California. Right. Not, not a major storm, but some areas could see uh, maybe up to a foot of snow or so in some of the highest elevations. But a week's worth of weather wouldn't be complete without mentioning without the Sierras this snow year. Out, oh, they just... They've had so much of it already this season. And uh, so like Carson, Donner Pass, some of those usual problem spots will uh, be uh, slick again today. So we'll take a couple, look at a couple of the cameras. A great new feature on Sonar, live Department of Transportation uh, cameras from uh, all the lower 48 states. So this camera here in Vermont, this is just south of Montpelier, Vermont, which is the capital. And that is what is happening Looking right southward now. right now on Interstate 89. Look at all that snow, not just on the grass, but on the interstate right That's now. That's a fair amount. It's a fair amount. So there are gonna be some just, you know, tricky driving conditions up there, that's for sure. Yeah. Again, not a major blizzard, but the snow will end up blowing around. There could be snow drifts, some limited visibility. And then this is up in Derby, not New York. This is also Vermont. Uh, this is along I-91, which this is right near the Canadian border okay. uh, with Vermont. Again, a lot of snow on the ground, some snow on I-91 up there too. This is generally what conditions are going to be like on the interstates, secondary roads in interior New England for the rest of today and into tonight. It'll finally clear out uh, probably during the day tomorrow. So uh, the Midwest, yes. still problems with flooding. We have to talk about that just for a moment, okay. especially up in the Corn Belt along the Missouri River, the border uh, between Nebraska and Iowa, uh, up in that region. Still a lot of areas with major flooding up there along that river basin. And the latest outlook from NOAA, which is the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, okay. uh, which is in charge of the National Weather Service as well, they issued a report yesterday, an outlook for spring from the rest of March on through May they're still expecting major flooding to continue for a lot of that region and downstream along the Mississippi River Valley as well because of more snow melt, because of expected above average precipitation through the spring. So there's still gonna be a large chunk of the country that's gonna to have to deal with moderate to major flooding, possibly all the way through May. That's bad news. That is really bad so, news. But they're, they're continuing, not only be, now the Weather Service they were, they were working with emergency management, other officials in that region before that big storm hit last week. 
to kind of get them ready because they're saying, yeah. look, there's going to be really bad flooding. And they're continuing to work with those folks that, so that they can continue to plan for more potential major flooding over the next couple of months. Thank you for that sobering news, but appreciate the updates as always. Thanks each and every day. Nick Austin here bringing it to us. And you know, for each disruption in the weather, often there are those who can take advantage of the opportunities and that very much pertains to the situation with logistics and, uh, and, and freight. John Paul Hampstead, JP, welcome aboard. Thanks for having me, Chad. Always great to have you wrapping things up here on Fridays for us. You've brought up the uh, outbound tender rejection index tree map. Tell us about it. Yeah, so this tree map is organized by highest uh, value of OTRI, which is the outbound tender rejection index. Um, OTRI measures the percentage of all loads tendered by shippers in a market that are being rejected by carriers for whatever reason. And so up here, so if you look at, say, Bismarck, North Dakota, um, the, lower, the reason why it's the biggest and the reason why it's in the upper left corner of the tree map is because it has the highest tender rejection index value, 43.64% of loads are being rejected. That's not really that unusual for Bismarck. Because um, people don't want to go up there. Yeah, so you know, Bismarck, Fargo, Pendleton, Oregon, that's not that unusual. Um, I should also say that the larger number is the percentage change for the day, and um, the color is the direction of change. So if it's less than 1% in either direction, it's going to be a kind of purplish color. If it's positive more than 1%, it's going to be green. Negative more than 1%, it's going to be in the, in the reds. Um, so what we're looking at are the disruptions to freight flows in the Midwest caused by a lot of the weather that um, Nick was just talking about. So look at Des Moines, Kansas City, Jefferson City, uh, even Joplin, Missouri, Omaha, Nebraska over here. These are all, you know, double digit um, tender rejection indexes at a time when the national freight market is about, is rejecting about 6% of all loads. Th these are, these are um, markets that are rejecting, you know, 19% in Des Moines, 23% in Omaha, 27% uh, in Joplin. Um, the Midwest has been pretty tight, especially with reefer capacity, all of 2019. But I think the weather, the, dis, you know, the, the destruction of bridges, levees, um, just the widespread flooding that we saw in Nebraska and Iowa has really, you know, just made trucks not want to go. I mean, people are literally drowning in floods and trucks clearly you know, don't want to go there or they want to, to charge a premium to, to move freight out of those markets. These are day over day changes. So even though the, it's, it's very high, it went down 4% in Des Moines. Is that, that's, is that what's happening there? It's just volatile right now? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's high, it's going, I mean, down 4% doesn't mean 400 basis points. It means 4% from whatever, whatever number it was before. So right. actually it's down just slightly. Okay, and so we are seeing a trend in the, the, the central area. Uh, that the, if we look at green, the central area of the United States, that's kind of why you pulled this up to look yeah, at some of that you, disruption. Yeah, if you look at like some of the, the larger markets, like if you look at like you know, Chicago, yeah. Joliet, um, even you know, Savannah, where's Atlanta is here at, at you know, rejecting only 4.04%. Yeah. Mo most of, I, th I think trucks are staying in the big markets. Fre uh, freight volumes have been a little sideways so far um, this month, kind of sort of sometimes above, sometimes just below year over year um, comps. And I think people are playing defensive, staying in lanes and markets where they know there's there should be a decent amount of freight. But and, and so I think that just exacerbates the disruptions that can happen when you have really bad weather in rural areas um, that are already back home markets. Okay. Well, thank you, JP. I appreciate that update. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Freight Waves Now, Friday edition, as we are bringing you the disruptions that are happening right now. Thanks for tuning in. We are, uh, you can find us on FreightWaves.com and share the love on social media. Find us on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and elsewhere. And in the meantime, don't worry, be happy.